This is how I filmed and edited a shopping cart video that got 1.8 million views in three days. And the comments were hilarious. Bro dropped the hardest shopping cart edit and thought we would have noticed. The chain swinging goes He's gonna act like hard. So we're not gonna talk about how we paid edit for a that chain swinging. This video was filmed with the Sony A7C with some handheld shots, which took ages to get right. All right. My hands are freezing cold. Oh God, I think that didn't work. <laughs> A lot of trial and error. I flick and it just goes to the right. <laughs> it's so dumb. Should I just pretend? <laughs> and some gimbal shots with the Moza Air Cross 3, a gimbal I've been testing out for a while. Link to the gear can be found down below. I wanted this video to be simple and easy flowing, and I wanted the visual effects to add to the video. So I made the filming very simple with doing orbit shots, some push-ins, and then one smooth traveling shot where I go from a wide shot of the car to the chain, which a lot of people liked, as you can see by the comments about the chain. I shot everything at 50 FPS, so now we can get to editing. Now, before the editing, this video used a copyright sound. <gasps> so it won't be monetized. But I would appreciate it if you checked out my new website where you can access this and all my other project files and also where I will be hosting online courses on VFX techniques. Also, check out my Discord server to hang out with like-minded editors. So as for editing, these are the nine steps that I did to achieve this edit. I firstly created a skeleton edit, which just had the shots timed to the music and would allow me to figure out the flow of the edit. And this is what it looked like. What the fuck? Let me add a little bit of spice. So then I opened the shops in After Effects for step two, which was to add speed ramps. Now I made a whole video on this that you can check out with the pop up banner. But essentially, you right click and add time remapping and add a keyframe at different points in the clip, then drag them together to create a speed ramp. Now, this was very simple in Adobe After Effects. However, some shots didn't go in the same direction of flow. So, a clever thing I did was reverse the shots before by just simply dragging this number in the opposite direction, which made it easier to transition to some shots like this. A lining shot. Now, one subtle thing I did to make transitioning between the shots even smoother was to align the focal point so that it's in the same place for some of the clips, which I did by adding some guides and then changing the position and scale. I did this manually, but I have made a video where I show you how to do this with the stabilized motion tracker in After Effects. So you can get a very satisfying locked in effect that can look like this. But now it was time for some serious big boy effects. The first was this pixel sorting effect. Now, they have to spend some money to get this plugin, and given that we're in a cost of living crisis, it's it wasn't stupid. the smartest decision. I actually haven't eaten in three days. So once I caught this, I rotoscoped out this shot of the car and then dragged the effect to the bottom layer, selected that layer and changed the output to gradient, set the threshold to 0.4 and messed about with a whole bunch of other settings and then keyframed the length to get this pulse effect. And I topped it off with a glow effect to make it look more sparkly, the smooth sliding effect. Now the final shot was a bit boring, so I decided to slap some extra spice that Kajun to the shopping cart by adding this smooth sliding effect that I have also taught on my channel, which just involves duplicating the shot, rotoscoping it, adding the offset effect, keyframing the shift center to parameter, and then adding motion blur with the CC force motion blur effect. Boom, the screen pulse effect. But our shot was still missing something, some spice. So I added this screen pulse zoom effect by adding an adjustment layer for the transform effect and keyframing the scale and rotation, then moving a few frames and resetting it. So it looks like this. But that wasn't enough to satisfy my very acquired visual effects taste buds. So I decided to add this chromatic displacement effect, which we also need to pay for unless you're familiar with that site. <gasps> WWW. 
So I added the effect to the rotoscoped cart and just played with these settings until the RGB blob looked really cool. And then I keyframed the displacement amount to get an effect that looks like this. Now, the piece de resistance was the wheel saber effect. Now I've done this tutorial before, but to make the spin scanning effect, you can play with the end and start offset to make the saber line small. And then you have to keyframe the mask evolution. And then you'll see a revolution. Not bad for a conclusion. Mm. <clears throat> color grading. Yes, color grading. And finally, I corrected the colors, slapped one of my LUTs from the Vroom Vroom LUT pack. And with all that done, this is what a viral edit finally looks like. Hmm. Oh, bitch, I do major shit. All this jewelry light up my whole neck, look like the Vegas strip. Real roster bought me a new mansion, cost me 80. But one thing I didn't tell you was how I made my final edit go from looking like this. Hmm. Oh, bitch. To this. <laughs> oh, bitch. For that, you'll have to click this video here when it comes out or learn how to make that scan logo effect here. Subscribe for more breakdowns and tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.